Given that I'm an engineer who works in robotics, I'm constantly learning. I have to learn computer science, math, physics, and dive into all types of applications. Early on, it felt like there was an impossible amount of information to learn. However, on my learning journey, I found techniques like creating flashcards, building a second brain, and drawing mind maps that promised to solve my problems. Mind mapping in particular felt really good. It felt natural to map out how everything fit together, think deeply about connections, and zoom in and out to look at both the big picture and the details. With all the newfound knowledge from mind mapping, I expected to apply it as an engineer and build something, but when I sat down, I couldn't actually do it. I pretty quickly realized the problem. Friends and YouTubers were studying declarative topics like biology and medicine. Engineers, on the other hand, actually have to build things. We study procedural topics. Looking at Bloom's taxonomy, I wrote down the questions I ask while mind mapping. Following mind mappers and concept mappers like Buzan, Novak, and Sung, I ask, how are topics connected and grouped together? And why are topics important? I then broke down each level, deciding if it leaned declarative or procedural. The problem slapped me in the face. The questions I was asking were for declarative parts of Bloom's taxonomy, not procedural. I needed to replace this declarative inquiry with procedural inquiry, tailored for engineering. After a lot of experimentation, I created two new questions. What project can I create that needs this? And how can I apply this in my current project? With just this line of inquiry, I had a breakthrough. I had an epiphory. Life is precious. First, I'd create a project to build. Then, I'd perform inquiry while solving problems for my project and asking, how can I apply new knowledge in my project? As I learned more about the topic, I'd expand the scope of the project to better cover the material I wanted to learn. Usually, I'd actually work on the project, but sometimes just the existence of that project and its problems was enough to create curiosity and drive high quality learning. I never thought of it like that. Oh. In moving to procedural inquiry, I had thrown out mind maps altogether. I was losing the benefits of cognitive offload on a canvas. As an experiment, I tried taking nonlinear visual notes while answering my procedural questions. What I started to find is that the smaller parts of my canvas emerged as flowcharts, cycles, visual metaphors, matrices, and graphs. When I zoomed out, I could spatially organize, add connections, add groups, and add more notes. The result was a visual map representing the procedural knowledge required to build my project. I'd finally connected procedural knowledge to mind maps. Good. While performing procedural inquiry, I hit a roadblock. When asking how I could use new information in my project, I could get a general idea, but I couldn't simulate what would happen in all situations. Take something basic, like a Python dictionary. I get that I can use it in a project to store data. But what happens when I merge two dictionaries with overlapping keys? What happens when I delete a key that doesn't exist? What happens when I edit a shallow copy of the dictionary? What happens when I loop through the dictionary in a certain order? I realized that by pushing myself to use and apply dictionaries in my project, I had discovered huge gaps in my understanding of the topic. I needed a new line of inquiry that reflected the procedural cause and effect of building and applying. So I asked, what happens when? Things really clicked when I answered those questions in a Jupyter notebook. 
In computer science especially, it can be possible to answer this line of inquiry relatively quickly by actually trying the thing. As a bonus, I was practicing while answering these questions. What is a Python dictionary? I get that it's a collection of unordered values accessed by key rather than by index, but what is a Python dictionary? You know what I mean? To explain the behavior I was seeing, I needed to look under the hood. I opened ChatGPT in Wikipedia and began mapping out the concepts and facts underpinning dictionary behavior. By applying information to a project, I had begun to ask what happens when. Now, by asking what happens when, I began to ask why. What is under the hood that causes the behavior I am seeing? By answering these questions, I could reason about behavior from first principles, draw on experience, and ultimately apply new information directly in my project. I was a procedural mind mapping machine. Taking a look at my new approach to inquiry, I realized there's a lot of declarative knowledge to be found where I thought it was all procedural. I ask, what is under the hood? What happens when? How can I apply new knowledge in my project? How is the information organized? What projects can I create or expand? The answers to these questions can be factual, conceptual, and organized on a canvas. Don't believe me? Take common topics people claim are only procedural and only learned through practice. For loops. Declarative. What instructions does it compile to? What happens on SIMD hardware when the loop isn't a multiple of four? Proofs, declarative. Typing, declarative. What makes a topic procedural is not the topic. What makes a topic procedural is our goal. If you take one thing away from this video, it should be that good learning and studying is goal oriented. Engineers build things. An engineer's mind maps, mental models, and inquiry should all look like scratch work on the way to building something. If you're not an engineer, ask yourself, what do I do and what are my goals? Do my mind maps reflect that? If you liked this video, maybe check out Omni on the iPad App Store. Maybe even leave a review. It really helps.